At each national pre breakfast, we invite an Emerald or Senator to give a short reflection on the role of faith in their lives. And this morning, we welcome Mr. Kevin Rudd to the group.
The building is preserved, but the site is now open to coffee shops and new life and services of good people at this church offer to those who have them. For our local church, our little local church, the rich to survive and prosper, we must be authentic in our local community in what we say and what we do. What is it that unifies these tales of three very different cities? The Jesus of history and the Christ of eternity speak to us across the ages about all humankind. This Jesus, who the writer to the Hebrews reminds us, is the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. This Jesus, who when asked to summarize all the law and the prophets, said to love the Lord your God, the Lord your heart, all your soul and your mind, and, with much greater difficulty, to love your neighbor as yourself. This Jesus, who tells us in St. Matthew's Gospel that God's judgment will hang on whether we have fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and visited the lonely. A Christianity which says to the church, and through the church, the nation, let us order our priorities accordingly. When asked what the principal challenge of the world was today, the superior general of the Jesuits responded crisply, as Jesuits tend to, by saying, the problem of the world today, its greatest problem is this, the globalization of superficiality. I believe much of our national discourse is suffering from the same. And this affects our priorities of our nation, of our communities, and of our faith. Let me list just a few. How do we preserve the peace of Asia and avoid conflict between the great nations of our region? Given that he said, let's how do we entrench the principles of sustainable economic development in this vast dry land of Australia, given that he has made us stewards of the earth and of his creation? How do we craft a tax system that provides opportunity and incentive for all, but sufficient resources to support the dignity, the aged, the sick, and the disabled, given his injunction which was always to look after the orphan and the widow? How do we work in the world, too, as the liturgy, as the liturgy reminds us, to share with justice Sources of the earth, so that children that die of starvation no longer do so, some five million dying each year for that cause. How do we, the peoples of the world, embrace the refugees of the world, given that he gave us the message of Good Samaritan? What is the balance between corporate incentive and corporate responsibility? How do we manage the impact of the digital revolution of the last decade on the young people of the next, their cognitive development, their socialization, their physical well-being? How do we deal with the epidemic of mental illness? How do we ensure the future of our families and our children given the unprecedented rates of family breakdown? How do we preserve a set of values for the future, mindful of both our religious and our civic traditions, capable of providing our nation with a robust moral compass for its future in a good world. And how do we celebrate what is good in this country and be grateful for that which we have been blessed with, rather than disappear into a vortex of criticism, complaint, and negation? These should form part of our national deliberations in depth, and also our deliberations as Christians in the church. But all these contain deep ethical dimensions, not merely technical, not simply political debates. And for the Christian political life, in part it is about how we set our national priorities, how we conduct our national discussions also about these priorities, whether we conduct these debates and discussions with reasonable civility, with mutual respect, as our democratic institutions reach conclusions in the And whether we have a boundless personal resilience necessary to endure the highs and lows of our public and our private lives. And all along, understanding that as Christians, we are failed human beings, always relying on the grace of God and the grace of his people. This, I believe, is the business of being a Christian in a contemporary age. It is also the business of all of us as Christians in this place. For there are good people who are Christians in this place from all sides of the political club. I am asked, as I'm sure many of you in this place are, by young people often in the street, this question. Mr. Rudd, I'd like to pursue a career in politics. How should I go about it? 
My answer is along these lines. First, what do you believe in? Why do you believe that? What can you do about that? Go there and do it. And work your hand out for doing it. These are the questions which I readily provide as free advice to others, and often with great difficulty, the same advice to myself. And thank you for your gathering with us this day.